Uh, this presentation is on uh, bed and reuse for the equine, in equine industry, sorry, and it's my pleasure to introduce Molly Bagardis and Michael Byron Brown with Green Mountain Technologies for this presentation. Thank you. And welcome everyone and please uh, if you have questions during this you know don't hesitate to ask and at the end I will say even if we run out of time you know I'd love to hear from any of you who have experience with bedding reuse uh, it's such a, a new concept that um, it would be great to hear you know from any of any of you um, so what we're going to show you today um, are the benefits of bedding reuse, uh, financial, operational, and health. And of course the operational health will all contribute to the financial benefits. To give you uh, just a quick our story, <laughs> um, I ran, owned and operated an um, equestrian center for 30 plus years. and. Um, really enjoyed the business aspect of it, ended up going back to get my MBA in sustainable business and one of the topics that I studied was actually the waste management. In doing so, I had the uh, great fortune of meeting Michael Brian Brown, who had been in the uh, composting business for 20 plus years, and seeing if there wasn't some way to overlap what he was doing um, with food waste um, and the waste streams and the, uh, the equine stable waste. So the first thing that he did really was send me over to Washington State University where they had, uh, he had put in a whole composting system for them, uh, area static pile system. And uh, on this tour, you know, this was, <laughs> you have to remember I come from a business background, so for me to walk through these piles of all of this stuff that was, you know, just a mess, uh, to the end building where <laughs> they showed me this pile of this fabulous material that could be used as, as a bedding, I was really impressed. Um, from there, um, I eventually made my way to working for Michael and uh, two of our earliest projects were both the um, the Army Base, uh, Fort Myer Henderson in Arlington, Virginia, and uh, ranch, a private ranch on Bainbridge Island, where we're from. Both of these um, equine operations uh, had, well, the private facility had about 20 horses, the Army has about 50 on a rotation basis, and uh, it's been very successful in composting their stable ways. Right, so, um, so long and short. You can compost the forest. I don't know much about it. <laughs> uh, but I've certainly dealt with a lot of the back end of a lot of different animals in the composting world. Uh, so I want to give you a little overview of different approaches to the composting process. Obviously, if we're going to take a material uh, like bedding, which is something that, you know, in the equine industry, you've got uh, people who are out there cleaning out the stall and, um, and taking, manure, taking manure and mixed bedding out of that stall. To convince them that, uh, say, 20 or 25 days later, they want to take that same material and put it back in the stall again, you obviously have got to do something to it to make it an acceptable product. So um, there have been a couple of different approaches that have been tested. Um, we are working in conjunction with a, uh, the WSU Extension, and there's a person there who's doing uh, work in Snohomish County uh, using, see, is that the, uh, there's a place using basic uh, static pile bins or aerated static pile bins for horse manure composting. This is the system that is at the uh, horse ranch on Bainbridge Island. It's a product that we manufacture. It's an in-vessel composting system. And uh, we don't really have good slides of exactly how it's working, but you know, we're ha happy to show you guys uh, after, the, after the presentation. Essentially it has a, uh, an auger, an electric drive auger that's inside the unit that blends and mixes everything up inside the unit and moves it from the load end to, to the dump end and that's the product when it comes out of the unit. So um, when you look at uh, the two approaches, the uh, bin systems can take uh, up to six months to produce really uh, a, uh, a meaningful product. Uh, the process has slowed down quite a bit. Um, it does require a fair amount of uh, operational labor once the material has been loaded to move it from bin to bin to bin. And then um, uh, horse manure composting, I'll go into uh, the particulars about why, the, why horse manure composting is, is easy in some ways and hard in others. Uh, and then um, for our system, we, I have lab data that shows that we can make a, a viable compost product in about 20 days that can be reused in bedding. We actually have samples, and Molly could probably pass them around, or um, of the of the types of bedding that are produced in the system. Um, so 
you get a much more uniform product that's being blended um, several times a day. This is and blended. the mix. We'll send that around with there's a keeping process and dry the material in uh, somewhere between 12 and 20 days, depending seasonally on, on what's happening. Obviously, our system costs more money than that system, uh, but it really comes down to the basis of how much space do you have at, at your stable? Uh, if you're going to, if it's going to take six months to process the same same amount of material that we can do in 20 days, then you need five or six times the land area to, to do your processing. Okay, so um, she had mentioned WSU. Uh, this is the WSU facility. It's an area static pile system. So this is not an in vessel system. It happened to be a project we installed in 2007 to manage all the manure that were coming out of their research uh, farms or facilities. So essentially we're blowing or sucking air through these pipes that run under these piles. And then they are taking that material, uh, putting in windrows, processing a windrow turner, and then screening it. And then they take the, the uh, best part of the product and store it in this building and uh, reuse it in their dairy. Uh, so they've been using um, the dairy manure um, for, or this, this particular recycled composted bedding in their dairies for almost 10 years now have had really good um, results from it, reduction in mastitis and a lot of other um, diseases that are associated with um, dairy industry. And uh, so when we did this project and they explained what they were doing with the, with the product at WSU, we started thinking, well, why wouldn't that work for the equine industry? So this is a, uh, another system. This is an NRCS uh, funded project in Oregon. And um, unlike this system, which has pipes under the piles, this is uh, uh, essentially a continuous concrete slab and has a whole series of orifices that are molded into the uh, slab. You can see one of them there. And this blower system and computer controller connect underground to a whole series of orifices. And then we use these temperature probes here to regulate the airflow. So it's a similar concept, just a lot more efficient to be able to do it on a, on a continuous concrete slab. So on the in, on the in vessel side, this is uh, another uh, this is uh, that same system we've had at the horse ranch before. This is doing a horse manure and food waste combination at uh, CSU and Fort Collins. So there, uh, it's out actually near the horse facility. And then um, this is uh, another um, this is not something we manufacture. It's a drum composting system that's often used in dairy bedding recycling. So on small farms, they'll use drums to essentially to um, reduce pathogens and help to dry the material before it's reused uh, in the dairy. So back to the getting down to lab data and the specifics about um, horse manure as a, uh, as a feedstock for composting. So this is, um, this is taken from the Fort Myer operation. They were using the pelletized bedding product. Uh, so it's sawdust and it's been pelletized, uh, and then this is a, the after it's been cleaned out of the stable, but before composting. So the moisture is in a good range; it's about you know roughly 60%, um, 65% moisture, and um, pH is a little low, and that has to do with the acidity of the bedding material. Um, electrical conductivity is is a little on the high side. The, the part that really affects compost process is, is the uh, total nitrogen is, is low. So you, can, you can see their, their analysis here. This is done by a lab in, in Washington that specializes in composting. And then the ammonium is, is high. So even though you have your total nitrogen low, a large portion of it is in the ammonia form, which makes sense. You smell horse, horse manure bedding, it smells like ammonia, urea, and the other. So the other nutrients tend to be on the low side. And so that nets out to what they refer to in the um, composting world as a C-N ratio. So you're looking at the amount of nitrogen that's available to break down a certain amount of, of carbon, nitrogen being the essential part for bacterial growth for building proteins. So it's low uh, in, in nitrogen. And this one's a little harder to read. Uh, but uh, so this is the this is a composted product 20 days out, out coming out of our vessel here, and uh, you can see the moisture content is uh, now uh, only 29%. So it's it's uh, only a few percent wetter than 
uh, a, dry, a dry shavings product that's used as a bedding. Uh, pH has gone to uh, basic level. Uh, electrical conductivity is, is in a reasonable range. Uh, but the, uh, the real uh, change has been the ammonia level is, is now very low. And the uh, C-to-N ratio has been adjusted. We've broken down some of the carbon. And what has happened is we've taken that ammonia and utilized it uh, to build, essentially to organically fix that nitrogen. Uh, so the challenge, as I was saying, with uh, horse manure composting, if you don't compost quickly, essentially that ammonia is lost in the process. Uh, so the ammonia is lost in the process, and so you don't have enough nutrient to drive a composting process. So that's why an industrial system can make compost out of the horse manure quickly. So uh, pathogen reduction uh, obviously is an issue. Uh, one of the things we'd like to get feedback from researchers here is what method of determining uh, pathogen levels um, should be used. Uh, we've done, you know, uh, we've done test uh, standard uh, uh, dairy bedding analysis, but you know the need or the, the benefit of something like a lactate lactose fermenter, all those are non-detected in the product. But you know horses aren't the same as cows, uh, so we went and we switched over to the uh, EPA 503 standard for fecal coliform analysis. We've gotten results that vary from from 240 to 1600. Their standard is the product should be less than a thousand. Uh, so we continue to debate about what really is a meaningful pathogen to uh, be testing for the equine industry. And I'm going to hand it to Molly. <laughs> I'll I'll have to speak quickly here. So a lot of the benefits that you know. Um, will make the operation of the farm a lot easier, the uh, reduction of parasites, um, flies, dust, the odor. Um, with these in-vessel systems, you know, you're going to lower your labor time, and the fact that they have such a small input is going to uh, make it much more workable for the stables that have, you know, a very limited amount of uh, open space. Ugh. Uh, reduce your shaving bill right away by 40% when you go to the, uh, the bedding reuse. Um, the really interesting part of this and the kind of, uh, t for me in the equine world, the unintended consequence is the fact that um, we saw these health benefits. And then when I went back and re revisited the science, especially in the dairy industry, we found that, yes, indeed, uh, health benefits uh, came, you know, as a, a very strong benefit. And uh, I don't know if any of you are horse folks, but um, thrush, scratches, dermatitis, hives, um, heaves, really any general allergy issues uh, diminish greatly with uh, the use of the composted bedding. I think this is a really great way to talk about the probiotic effect, um, the fact that it now has a really strong uh, microbiota. Bio, is that a correct spelling of practice release? Anyway, the population to compete with the, uh, the fungus that causes so many of these issues in the horses. Uh, another woman who's done a lot of work on this is up in Washington, and uh, she even had a horse that was at its last moment. Um, it had a tracheotomy, and they could not find anything to um, stabilize the horse's respiratory until they put it on composted bedding. Um, this is actually really um, a very important point because uh, we, did, we ran these tests and we found that the composted material, even though uh, it was a, a slightly wetter material, it continued to have a higher uh, ability for absorption. So right there explains you know, why the dust is lower um, and yet it is able to really pull the moisture off of the uh, base of the stall. So uh, this is a stall bedded with pellets, and that's going to act very much um, like the fines of the compost. And down in the right-hand corner, you'll see that there's, you know, once it gets wet, it's just very soggy, and that's what the horse is going to be standing on. Um, what we propose is a 50-50 mix, and what that allows is for the composted material to really wick the moisture. Um, the larger pieces of shavings offer the barrier to keep the horse's body or feet or whatever off of that moisture. 
Um, so where we are today is trying to take all this information, and, and to me it's been so interesting to listen to these other talks, you know, the need for collaboration of information, the need for further research. We're very lucky that Washington State University is very proactive in this and has a woman up in uh, just north of Seattle doing a, a grant program right now to study this. Um, but anyway, there's our waste to worth. <laughs> uh, anyway, I'd love to hear from any of you. Yeah. What's that inverse inverse cost? It's about uh, it ranges from about fifty to one hundred and ten thousand. It depends on how big a system the stable needs or the farm. We've uh, we've done a, a number of different projects, and, and a number of universities have been buying them because they can take their equine manure program and combine it with their food waste composting program, and basically be able to solve two problems on campus. So that's what CSU, University of Maine. Uh, we're looking at Mount Holyoke College. We're all trying to combine that, those two waste flows. Yeah. I, I noticed on, on some of your your numbers here that your your finished product had such a low moisture content. Were you really getting a complete compost because your moisture was so low? Did the composting process actually end because of the low moisture content? Yes, yeah, so we were doing stability testing at the same time. So both um, bigger and immersion for uh, different germination of seeds and also uh, CO2 evolution. So they were saying that 20 days the product was stable plus low bone moisture. But you're absolutely right. We're running this trend where we're reducing the moisture to a level that is going to start inhibiting biological activity. And that's where that whole combination of um, trying to utilize and get the process to happen quickly uh, with an in-vessel system that's being agitated frequently, breaking up those force manure balls and getting that organic material available is really important before that nutrient and that moisture disappears. I think what's important to remember too though with these in vessel is one of the benefits for the bedding reuse is that the integrity of the larger pieces of shavings make it through the system quickly and they're not broken down. So that's where a lot of when you see the box that went around of the mixture you know you can see those pieces of shavings that are are still in good shape. Yes? I'm sorry I'll do in the back. Yeah. Uh, so, what is your five-winter nine-winter ratio when you're starting out? It, it's um, depending on what type of bedding. It's about um, anywhere from 35 to 50 at the start. Uh, that's how you're able to get that quick stabilization. We have to go, we have to utilize the nutrient that's available quickly. Otherwise, um, it, it'll shut down because of nutrient deficiency. And another related question to that is, in your very first slide, you showed the bedding system was taking 90 to 180 days. Yes. In comparison, it is the same product you are comparing here on the bend on the end of the glass hole is about 20 Correct. They, they're both shaving. They were both shavings bedded uh, horse manure. But Weren't the same. It was not the, the same location. So that, that's fine. But the product. You the end product. The product you are comparing mm -hmm. is the same. It's just taking 180 days off right. the open system. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, is this composting only the purpose is for using reusing for the bedding material, or is also qualified for land application? Like uh, yeah, we qualify for land application. So it really depends on what the stable uses their highest highest best use. Um, so whether they're if they have a high value, the IOS Ranch. I could let Molly speak to that. Um, <laughs> He actually sells his um, his compost for more than he buys his shavings for, you know, per yard. So financially, he's happy just running it through and and uh, selling it as as compost soil amendment. But if you reuse it for the bedding material, how many times you could do that? Well, get concentrated. Well, no, that's why it's so important that we do the 50/50 mix in the stalls, is so you're always introducing the new shavings. Is right. Otherwise, we'll end up with dust at some point. <laughs> now for one more question. I guess going with the consistency thing is how many times can you reuse this product over and over again? And when horse people see how to reuse the bedding, how do you fight the parasite concern? The good news is, is the research that I have done is that um, there's a lot of parasite, you know, reduction and kill through the composting system. So there's not. Um, a fear that you're spreading those parasites by using the bedding reuse any more than you would be horses getting turned out to a paddock or a pasture. Um, and um, 
as far as using it, using it, using it, we have never not added new material to it. So I can't answer that. I can only assume that you know, there's a point of diminishing return. 